Hello and welcome back to this damn full idealistic crusade. This video is a watch review, actually. I don't consider myself to be a watch aficionado or a real watch nerd, although I know people put a great amount uh, of effort into uh, watch collecting as a hobby, particularly James Bond fans. And I myself have always wanted particular models as seen in the films, but those are usually at a unobtainium price point. I, like many other people, I've always wanted a a Rolex Submariner, particularly the model number 5513 from Live and Let Die, which I've wanted ever since I first saw the film when I was four and a half years old, and it's still my, my number one uh, most desired prop from any film. But actually having a Rolex is, you know, an expensive prospect, even a used Rolex, and though that model is insanely collectible and valuable. And also the idea of wearing a Rolex or even a, an expensive Omega watch uh, as a day-to-day -day watch, just the thought of wearing an expensive item like that and the thought of, you know, catching in on something or digging it up or scratching the glass or, of course... You know, if you were walking around at night and you had a really expensive watch on your wrist that, you know, but that might mean somebody might want to uh, perhaps try to take said watch from you because you have an expensive item on your wrist. So there are, there are a lot of things that mean that I myself and probably a lot of other people wouldn't want to wear an expensive timepiece as your regular daily watch. Now, I've always liked watches and I, I haven't worn one in a long while because my, my old one died and I never really had a particularly expensive watch watch or a, uh, a good watch I could wear every day that was rugged, durable, and reliable. So I'd been keeping an eye out for one, and of course, if it could resemble a Bond watch, the, all the better. Uh, but also, I've been troubled, as many fans have, by the official Bond licensing and, and cross-promotions and official products that have been available are catering exclusively to a very niche, exclusive market with a very high price bracket. And the more things that come out on the official 007 web store uh, it have just been increasingly more and more ridiculous. Now we have the, the, the various teddy bears and stuffed animals that go for hundreds of dollars. And, and while there are some nice uh, replicas of clothing seen in the classic films uh, from specialty clothing designers, uh, they are very expensive and well out of the range of, of myself and all other, you know, seemingly normal Bond fans without a without a very large uh, amount of disposable income to put into things like this. So it, it's very frustrating being a Bond fan because there's there's not a lot of materials you can actually afford to show and enjoy your fandom in a physical form uh, because there simply isn't anything for an affordable mass market. So you really do have to, as, as really as always, you have to find things that are not specifically a licensed Bond product that you can sort of you know, make the claim, you know, hey, this is very Bondian, or you can read the Bondian parallels. And sometimes they are so obvious that you would think somebody might have wanted to maybe say, hey, we could license this and have a, a big seller on our hands because it, it would actually be an affordable James Bond product that all Bond fans could purchase. But apparently that's too much of a logical idea for certain people to to grasp because they seem to only want to go after the luxury market and when you get into watches uh, because of the partnership being with uh, omega really since goldeneye in 1995 you know, that's at least not as expensive as a Rolex, but it's still out, out of the realm of affordability for most people. And most people aren't going to want to sink in uh, that significant chunk of change into a watch, especially since most people are, are have already switched over to smart watches if they wear any sort of wristwatch at all. So, you know, wh while watches are still a very popular hobby for a lot of people, it's not necessarily something people are going to want to sink a lot of money into or have that type of disposable income and James Bond watches are an iconic part of the films and the character even in the literary Bond Bond has has many uses for different watches in the novels so having a James Bond type watch is is pretty much a no-brainer for a Bond fan so imagine my surprise when I look up a few various articles because I'm trying to find a, a nice well-made inexpensive expensive watch to wear because I, I didn't just missing having having a regular wrist watch that I could also feel comfortable wearing around all the time and if it happened to get damaged or beat up it wasn't so expensive that 
that would be, you know, very costly to repair or replace said watch. You know, just something you'd feel comfortable wearing as a daily watch. Uh, of course, two of the big brands you'll see mentioned for inexpensive watches that are at least, you know, durable and, and pretty well regarded are, of course, Timex and Casio. And I hadn't thought about Casio watches in a long time. But they're still making really affordable, nicely put together watches in a, in a variety of different design types that uh, you can get into at a very extraordinarily affordable price point. But one in particular I was not aware of until uh, seeing it mentioned time and time again uh, is the model AE12000, which is very well known among the watch collector community as a really fantastic watch that is just full of bang for your buck, especially at the frequently on sale and very low price tag it goes for. There are a variety of models but for the most part at any time of the year you can get uh, whichever model you prefer for anywhere around $25. They offer a metal band for a little bit more but even that is only about $30 but uh, the regular models come with a sort of rubberized standard strap that you can uh, get in a variety of different colors for uh, you know about $20 to $25 depending on which color you want and who actually has it in stock. So that's what I currently have on my wrist, and apologies, yes, I know I have it on the right wrist because I'm a lefty and I prefer having a watch on my right wrist, but what immediately caught my attention and what every Bond fan will immediately notice is when you look at the face of this watch, it's going to seem very familiar because this watch is rather at least close. I don't know if it was directly patterned on the original model, but it, it seems like that was the idea. Well, if you look at this watch, it's going to seem very similar to the famous Seiko watch as seen in Octopussy with the uh, with the tra homing device in the upper corner, which of course rotates around and lets Bond track the Fabergé egg that Q has planted the tracking device in. Now, this is one of Casio's famous inexpensive digital watches, but the amount of features it offers for the low price point and the fact that it looks astoundingly close in design to the Seiko from Octopussy has led a lot of watch fans to give it the nickname of the Casio Royale. So when you look up Casio Royale, it's always about this, the AE12000 model. And of course, depending on which model you're looking at and in terms of color and in terms of what type of strap it comes with, the, the letters after it will will differ a little bit, but AE12000 or Casio Royale will get you looking at this particular model. Now, they make a lot of different models that are also similar to this in design. They have a lot more advanced watches, and they have watches that are, are simpler as well. So there's a whole range and variety of watches out there. But all of these are, are, are quite well made, and I'll insert plenty of uh, close-up footage and, and photos of this so you can see the face more clearly. But when you look at this watch in particular, the build quality is actually ridiculously good for a little cheap $25 watch. The actual case is 42 millimeters wide, so it, it actually fits nicely on the wrist without being too large, uh, but it's also not a very small watch either. The case itself seems to be a sort of metallic, pla but it's more of a plastic type of material with paint over it to give a sort of metal finish here with the silver, which I chose because, of course, it looks like the Octopussy Seiko. Uh, there are, of course, the, the main version is black. That's what you can actually pick up in stores. I even found it in Walmart just sitting on the shelf, uh, but then they also offer it in other colors as well. The actual back plate is metal, and the, uh, the actual battery life is rated at 10 years years for this digital watch so you won't have to be replacing the battery anytime soon and if you do it's just running off of a, a CR2025 battery which you can get anywhere and replace very easily yourself. 
So uh, it's not an expensive battery to replace, but you don't have to replace it very often, which is already a big plus. Uh, I've had Timexes where I had to replace the battery all the time. Uh, but this also is rated for uh, water resistance up to 100 meters. Now, some people have tested it, and uh, it is water resistant. I have you know, done a little bit of testing with that myself, uh, but of course I haven't gone diving with it. I don't think I probably would. But if you were to go swimming, you would at least get plenty of water resistance for general activities. Uh, but on top of that, we have additional features built in that also uh, sort of give away why they have gone for this design and why it looks so similar to the Octopussy Seiko. Of course, the, the big thing immediately you're going to pick up on is in the upper left-hand corner, you have this additional clock face that very much resembles the Octopussy Seiko with the tracking device. Well, this is actually an analog clock, which as you can see, is actually giving you the minutes and second hand count going around with the actual digital timer as well. It's not necessary at all in a small, inexpensive digital watch, but it is a brilliant little addition that I absolutely love, and I find myself staring at it all the time. And of course, your first thought as a Bond fan is you, you wish that it did the little circular pattern with the little red dot at the top and made the little beep as the Octopussy Seiko watch does. If, if this had, and this is where, had this been a licensed product, if they could have somehow put that in there, this would be like the greatest little Christmas gift for every Bond fan in the world. Um, I still think it is, even, even without the official capacity, but uh, it makes me wonder if, if it would ever be possible to modify this and put the Octopussy sound effect in as a little tiny, um, you know, you could turn it on and every time a, a second would pass, you'd hear the little, the little beep sound uh, from the tracking device. But that is the, the big signifier that makes yeah, Bond fans' brains immediately go, oh gosh, it's the Octopussy Watch. So that's already a really interesting touch that, again, you wouldn't expect in such a cheap watch. But the other big draw is this is actually a world time watch, which is why you have the little world global map there as well. And this actually lets you switch through the various world times. So when you change the mode, you can actually see the country indicator is different. Right now it's on London time, but you can cycle through As you can see, it actually changes the city and it changes the indicator on the actual map. This is a fascinating little addition. And again, this is a little $25 cheap, inexpensive Casio digital watch that does this. And this is just an additional feature they just added. And the fact that you actually have the little global map and it changes along with it, I mean, that's just fascinating. So this is actually a separate function, so you can actually leave it on a particular world time, and then you switch back to the main time, which you've set to your time zone. So you don't actually get confused, and you know you can just make sure to switch back to the main time mode. Uh, or you can leave it on the actual other time zone. If you were traveling, this is a perfect watch for traveling around. Uh, you just switch to the other time zone, and you leave it on that until you fly out. Uh, but the, the addition of having the global map as well with the indicator is fascinating. So, uh, of course, you have other traditional watch functions. There is an alarm function, of course along with your timer function. Of course, you have a stopwatch function as well. And of course, what would a good digital watch be without an illumination feature? Now, this actually lets you change the cycle length. So right now, I've got it set on one and a half seconds, so it doesn't you know, draw battery down very much. But you can extend that to staying on for at least three seconds. It lights up in this nice sort of yellow, orange, or amber color. It's very easily visible in the dark. Uh, it's not too terribly bright, but it's you know exactly what you expect from a really solid, inexpensive digital watch. Uh, so again, the the amount of features they packed into this thing is is really something. So in addition to all of those and having a really well built, solid, inexpensive watch, just look at how closely this resembles the Octopussy watch. 
I mean, this th there there is a reason why this is called the Casio Royale among watch aficionados, and this is also a watch you can wear in front of a watch geek, and they'll they'll know that you've at least put some time in and gotten a solid watch. You don't have to have an expensive five hundred dollar timepiece or a thousand dollar wrist watch to actually you know impress a watch geek. This is the exact type of watch that you get, and someone who knows watches, you know, actually knows that's a solid watch that you know you actually you know took some time and got a decent watch that you didn't have to go and spend an arm and a leg on. The fact that this thing is twenty five dollars on on average, and when it goes on sale, it drops below even twenty dollars sometimes, depending on where you get it, what time of year, and which model you're interested in. Uh, again, they even offer this with a metal band. If you want an actual metal band and you want to make it look a, a bit fancier, or, you know, you could actually wear this for uh, formal events or something, or or with, with a suit or something. Especially if the uh, if you have the metal band, and of course you can always get a fancier NATO strap yourself, and or you can modify this. There are many uh, mods available for this that people have done and posted how tos and things. So it's also very customizable if you wish. And Again, it's so inexpensive, you can't really go wrong with this. So I really think this, even though it's not licensed and it's not claiming to be a replica and it's not one of these replica watches from uh, some company that is uh, trying to make as close of a replica as they can but still be unofficial, uh, there are now some of those doing the various Rolex Submariners and other Bond watches that are really great but they're still very expensive uh, and you wouldn't want to wear them everywhere. This is an incredible value. I've now had this for several weeks. I've had absolutely zero issues with it. It's extremely comfortable to wear. I, I just went for the standard sort of rubber strap, which is a little more inexpensive. And plus, I'm, I'm not really big on metal bracelets anyway if I'm wearing a watch every day. Uh, th this is an incredible value. Uh, and I paid... Uh, I only paid $23 for this. I got it from Casio's uh, official uh, eBay store. They actually sell watches directly uh, through eBay. And it just came in this simple little box, which is just a simple plastic uh, watch holder inside of, uh, of of a paper box. Nothing fancy. Uh, this is the exact same thing you'll see if you go and find it in stores. You so the box, like everything else, is really unassuming. But don't let that fool you, because I, I really do think this watch is a f not just a phenomenal value and an absolute joy to wear all the time, but as a Bond fan, every single time you look down at your wrist or you look at your watch, you're immediately going to have a little bit of a smile on your face because it is so reminiscent of the Octopussy Seiko. And you'll literally hear, <laughs> you'll, you'll look at the little analog clock section and you'll just hear the little chirping beep noise of the, of the tracking device in your head. It, it, it's just going to happen. So I really do think that not only is this a phenomenal value for so many features packed into a really well-made little watch that you can wear as your daily watch and enjoy the heck out of it, but it's even better for a Bond fan who is looking for something that is not going to cost them a lot of money. So not only do I think this is one of the best bargains in watches, but I think this is the best bargain Bond item there is. You can get this for $25 or less and it's well made and I don't know about you but anytime I find a really well made quality item that does not cost a lot of money but it also is where the manufacturer took the time to actually design it properly and not cut corners in terms of something that's going to make it less effective or deficient in some way to keep that price point lowered uh, I really want to champion or support it when the, the rare instances I come across something like this so I do think the the Casio AE12000 or the Casio Royale as it's called even though it's not anything having to do with Casino Royale just rolls off the tongue better I guess than Octo Casio. Uh, this is 
the bargain of James Bond items in 2023. And that's really saying something because there are no real official James Bond bargains. And the uh, James Bond officially licensed merchandise and tie-ins are becoming increasingly ridiculous to the point that they seem rather insulting to the fan base who, myself included, wants nothing to do with the overpriced junk they just slap a logo on or throw on the 007 store. So uh, once again, you're, you're left searching for other items that can be uh, understood as Bond-like or Bondian. And of those, this, the Casio AE-12000, is the single best one I've ever found. This is a phenomenal value for money. And I think every Bond fan will have a wonderful time, no pun intended, uh, or I should say pun intended because this is a wonderful timekeeper. Uh, you'll have a wonderful time with this. And every time you look at it, you'll think of the Seiko in Octopussy because it is so wonderfully similar. And this is put together with such quality uh, for especially astonishingly for the price that I think every Bond fan should have one of these on, on their shelf. Even if you're a big watch aficionado and you have a lot of the Bond type watches or you have a bunch of Omegas and things, you can't go wrong having this on your yourself as well for a sort of uh, daily driver watch or, or a beater watch to uh, just wear around the house or something. It is a phenomenal value for the money, and it's so durable that I, I definitely think I will have this for the next 10 years until the battery goes out and I have to replace it, uh, because this is, again, I'm just astonished at how much they got into this little thing, how inexpensive it is, it, even when it's not on sale, the list price on this is only, you know, 25 or $30. Um, you can get the fancier model with the metal band. You can get different colors. Uh, you can customize it. You can mod it. It's really a no-brainer, and I think this is, if any Bond fan wants a Bond-type item and doesn't have a lot of money to throw around, this should be your go-to. It is an absolutely fantastic watch for the money, and especially when it goes on sale for under its list price around, you know, I've seen models even drop down under $20, which is just insane. So don't get miffed and uh, hot and bothered about all the stupid crap that is on the official store for ridiculous amounts of money, and look at inexpensive items that you yourself can view as Bond Yen or make Bond Yen in your own way. And the Casio AE-12000 or the Casio Royale is the perfect example. This is the everyman's James Bond watch, um, just without question. And it's a phenomenal value for the money. So that's why I wanted to do a whole video on it and at least uh, recommend it to other Bond fans because I, I picked this up not knowing what to expect. Uh, although I read a lot of really great reviews and I'm like, surely it can't be that good. It's only $23, you know. It is that good. And I picked this up for $23 from Casio's uh, eBay store with free shipping, which is crazy. So this was less than $25, and I heartily recommend it to all Bond fans. This is the watch that everybody can have and afford and, and wear every day and enjoy the heck out of it. So those are my thoughts on the Casio Royale that is beloved uh, among Casio fans, uh, a lot of Bond fans like, and is very highly regarded with good reason, even among the watch collector community. This is one of those really wonderful watches that punches way above its price point. And if you're just looking for an affordable watch that you could wear every day and is, is made to last if you take care of it, uh, this is a no-brainer. And I think it is the number one best product for a Bond fan to purchase. If you're looking for a, a fun James Bond type product that's not officially licensed, but also is well made and anyone can afford. Again, this is, it goes on sale all the time, sometimes under $20 and has many different customization options. And uh, it's just a, a great watch to have. And I, I absolutely love wearing this thing. So as always, I hope my babblings about the world of James Bond and now uh, also talking about some uh, various Bond type items has been at least somewhat fun and informative. And as always, keep bonding.